Now, in the Zeitgeist movie, right, the Zeitgeist movie, let me just put this up here. The Z-E-I-T Geist, right, this whole Zeitgeist. Now, underline it because there's two parts to it. In the Zeitgeist um, um, conspiracy so-called movie that some people say woke a lot of people up, in that particular um, documentary, there were three parts, right? There were three parts. The first part dealt with um, religion. The second part dealt with, like, the Freemasons and money and, and, and the, like, kind of secret societies. W would that be correct? And then the third part, the third one, the third dealt with 9-11. Now, that might not be strictly accurate because um, the second part, I believe it was like, yeah, New World Order, um, secret societies, Freemasonry, so forth and so on. Um, this was the first movie. So the first movie was, was three parts. And the first part, religion, that dealt with religion, we were some of the first or one of the first amongst our group of folks to say that Let's not get too hype on it because they're talking about Egypt. Because a lot of a lot of the Afrocentrics and other folks are like, "See, we told you so. Egypt was black in the Bible, and 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 that helps some to dismiss the Bible." Now, behind the zeitgeist is is Albert Pikey, the Albert Pikey, um, one of the top. Um, Free American Freemasons, you know, responsible for the Ku Klux Klan, and and his rap sheet is very very interesting. And anybody should check out take a take his name Albert Pikey. So <clears throat> I think his name deserves to be up here, Albert Pike or Pikey, Albert Pike or Pikey. In fact, he was a Civil War general. He's a Civil War general. And he is the one who is responsible for actually the Ku Klux Klan, behind the Ku Klux Klan in Washington D.C. He's one of the few who actually have has a, a monument, a Civil War. One who was on the so-called bad side of the Civil War. He's one who has his monument or statue of himself in D.C. Freeman, I think, Freeman perspective. And a couple of others have pointed that out. In fact, Freeman Perspective, we have to give him a shout-out, as well as tell ones to check out his stuff all over the Internet, the YouTubes, before he used to be on the Google. We caught on to his work where he talked about the Columbia Goddess and, and, and different, um, a different approach to the whole, quote, New World Order, and admitted um, what a, a conspiracy and he says he's been right, and many things that he has put out have been accurate from when we started to watch his program. So in that new production that we've seen, a recent production, at least we've seen, we've seen it recently, we don't know the, the exact dating of it, it's called Wash Your Mind, right? Wash Your Mind or something to that effect? Wash Your Mind. Now, Wash Your Mind, I think we should put a hail out to this too. Um, well, wash your mind. We're not going to put this up here just yet because we want to break down zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. And we took, took a couple of notes, and we were pleased to hear this wash your mind, this wash your mind video that um, features chiefly uh, Freeman of the Freeman perspective. Even the name that um, the Anglo-American brother chose um, was accurate. Anyway, zeitgeist, when you look it up, and this is one thing that a lot of a lot of us don't do, and a lot of researchers might not include in their program, but it's very, very important. If there's a name or something, to do your research into the meaning of the name. The meaning of the name doesn't always tell you exactly how it's being used as you encounter it, but the meaning of the name is very significant, especially when dealing with this so-called New World Order and so-called New World Order, because our question is, who owns the New World Order? Is it their New World Order? We're in a new age. We're in the end of one age. And this brings us to the whole idea of the end of the world. And we thought the documentary or the program, um, Wash Your Mind, Freeman Perspective, Wash Your Mind program, for a couple of others that unfortunately we, 
we didn't recall their name, was very was very important. Even the, the, the visual quality of it was very interesting and very important, and we would highly recommend ones checking that out. But let's get into the name Zeitgeist for a moment. I think we've touched on this before, previously. But Zeitgeist, there's another popular German word, and this is a German word, and we have to acknowledge this is a, a German word. And that means it goes back to certain concepts rooted in, in central, um, central Europe. And speaking of the Germans, this is something that we wanted to do a separate video on, but it was for our German viewers, the few or however many German viewers we have to this channel and to our, our works, the Line of Judah works, and, and to I, Rasi Adinos, Tefari Wendem Yaden, that we released a couple of videos recently and included just a, a brief clip or sample of some Bob Marley music, Bob Marley and the Whalers, um, both the uh, Bob Marley and some of his children's video. And as we mentioned in the Buffalo Soldier series, that um, they had blocked it because what ones don't know is that now the rights to a lot of classic and original reggae music is owned um, almost exclusively by the Gentiles, the Goyim, who are all down with this Leviathan system. Now, Leviathan system is this corporatism. And we have to be very clear on this. In fact, um, we're going to address that, but just take a note of what we're saying right here, that Leviathan, the Leviathan in our Bible, the interpretation and the manifestation in these last days and times, and it's the last days and times, not of just earth and everything like that, but it's the last days and times of a certain way of thinking, a certain way of, of being, a certain system of things. This is why it's called a world. A lot of folks get confused when they hear that, and that sets them into another, a lower vibrational level, you know saying, of this, of this so-called, for lack of a better word, matrix. But the word matrix itself means a womb, and it's used in an interesting way, biblically speaking. So a lot of these words we've been hearing and getting spooked out by a lot that we're seeing that this New World Order, the Satanism, Luciferian, the people worship Baphomet, so forth and so on, and ones are getting spooked out, and this is also part of the plot. We're not saying that the makers of Zeitgeist per se were a part of it, but what's very interesting, a lot of the same information in Zeitgeist was put out over and over and over again in a variety of ways especially this new media, online videos, so forth and so on, as well as books and writings. And from the first release of it, it automatically received almost like rave reviews. It, was, it, it went virtually viral. Now, this is not accidental. Even Freeman, uh, Freeman Perspective note, noted that in Wash Your Mind, that this is not just accidental. In fact, he was putting out a lot of this even more so and more accurate in on his TV channel and his production and there's been others, whether Jordan Maxwell, um, whether even, well, well, not on this level, not Alex Jones. Alex Jones it has another focus and we'll get into Alex Jones perhaps in another, at another time. You, you know, but we still give thanks for a lot of his programs that he put out as well because it allowed at many of us to now have video or documentary evidence to show to others, not saying that they're going to see what we see, per se, but at least there's some documentary evidence. Now, on the Bob Marley part in German, there's a whole German connection, even with the New World, so-called New World Order, with um, um, Adolf Hitler, with a lot of those occultic um, sort of community, um, um, the secret doctrine, um, that woman, Helena, uh, whatever her name is right now. I, I, we don't like to hold a lot of, huh? Blavatsky, yeah, the Blavatsky. In fact, we have, we have her book. We have the actual book, and it's an older printing of it because there's a lot of new printings of her book that's coming out now since it's been so popularized. But just like um, relief, these relief things when there's some famine or catastrophe somewhere in the world, a lot of that is also so plugged into the Illuminati system 
that the Illuminati is profit, the so-called Illuminati, which is the German Bavarian Illuminati order of Adam Weishaupt, you understand, Adam Weishaupt's community. So there's a German connection. And recently we saw the Bride of Frankenstein, Frankenstein again. So, see, that's another German connection. And a lot of, like, Siemens, Siemens, that's a German connection. In fact, that's what they said was on the work camps, the Siemens logo. We picked that up from Freeman perspective. Now, there's some connection. There's a German, so-called German um, connection to all of this that has to also be dealt with seriously that many have just been touching on it here and there but but why german and why do the germans own the rights to a lot of the reggae music especially bob marley's music and if you've tried to include even a little a little a little loop of it it seemed like a lot of this started to happen on the youtubes especially after that little um, white boy was singing the Buffalo Soldier. You remember that? The little white baby or child was singing Buffalo Soldier and rocking to him. I thought, oh, that's so cute. So forth and so on. After that, we noticed, even when we use a little clip, I think they used the whole song in that one, but when we use a little clip, they basically block these videos. And they say that it's blocked in certain countries. It's not blocked in the Caribbean. You understand? We noticed with the Buffalo Soldier video, it could play throughout the Caribbean. Almost every island and islands and places we didn't even know in the Caribbean, it could play there. But they blocked it from playing in the United States of America and in Germany. So these videos were blocked in the United States of America and Germany because on one hand, it's the UMG, the Universal um, Music Group. Now, you should be familiar with the whole role and presence of the Illuminati and Satanism in the whole music industry and what's behind the music industry and a lot of these celebrity stars and certain secret rites and initiations, you understand, that they've been initiated in. In other words, how they've sold their souls for rock and roll, so to speak. And that's another very good foundational sort of a, a, a video. But anyway, be that as it may, perhaps we'll touch on this issue further at another time concerning um, the censoring of, of reggae music but it's important for us to say that because that's part of it. It's almost like take the weapon, in a sense, out of our hands. In other words, take the music or, or take control or, and, and, and not just take control of it and just, just suppress it or have nobody hear it, profit off of it, and then re-spin the music for a lot of Babylonian products to sell because it's about the the head and heart. It's a head and heart campaign it's there about. It's about the soul. It's about feeling and thought. And it's about vampirism and, and parasiticism on feeling and thought. In fact, something that my, my, my sister wife said years ago showed us that she also had this and has this wisdom is that if I, and, 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 and if I'm I hope I'm correct about this she said something about like they they're going around searching for feelings we was watching like the news I think this was around um, one of these cases the Amadou Diallo case or something like that and a lot of other things that was news at that time saying that they're going around almost like what the new world order what this so-called conspiracy Satanistic world order is doing is going around searching for feelings, and we start to notice how they always was using feelings, feelings and emotion. Like in some a news reporter will come to somebody, how did you feel? Did not even after 9/11 especially was 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 going around to capture with the technology, you understand, with the outside inward technology, in other words, the wisdom. Because wisdom versus technology, that's another video that we want to touch on in the teaching, more importantly, that we want to bring forward in the video version. Um, wisdom, there's the wisdom that comes from above, which is heavenly, and there's the wisdom that comes from below, which is earthly or, biblically speaking, is satanic. So there's two types of wisdom. Now, when we interpret this rightly, these two kinds of wisdom are the wisdom that comes from, from within, the spiritual wisdom from within, outwardly. This is like the God-given wisdom. 
And then there's the other wisdom or the other technology and, and miracles or what seems to be so-called miracles or amazing, miraculous things are accomplished by these two types of wisdom or these two types of magic. Some call that so-called white magic, right? And then some call that black magic. And you see these symbols that I'm using with my hands. This is the one. You understand? This is how we take our Shema. You understand? Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad. And then you probably are familiar with this peace sign. You understand? The peace sign is, is one of these particular symbols. Or ones would do this particular symbol as well. Now, it's interesting when these hand signs, and this is where Freeman Perspective, his programs are very good to really go to the very root and bring forth certain um, documentary evidence that ones can do their own study, and knowledge is, is power. One becomes empowered, you understand, when they understand what's really behind these symbols. But in our opinion, zeitgeist, was an attempt of the very New World Order conspiratorialists or, or those who are part of this and on the inside of this conspiracy to actually profit off of that and to ride the wave. There was a particular wave going on from a lot of grassroots and underground teachers and, and researchers and others from all different sort of races, creeds, and so-called religions or spirituality who were all hitting up on the same conspiracy, the same global or world conspiracy, and they were bringing out their, their prospective productions. And in order to take one's mind off of that and like a sponge to capture up that interest, Zeitgeist was a perfect vehicle. But when we look at this name, and you know how we are, we're into the semantics, we're into the shim, the shemantics. The shemantics is blessed be the Lord God of the shem. You understand? Blessed be the Lord God of the name, Hashem, Baruch Hu. But on a practical level, the semantics is getting into the etymology. So when you come across a particular word, you understand, that's from another language, even in English, it's good to have a good, this is a, you see this right here, this is the Webster's, the Webster's um, New World College Dictionary. Now, why we prefer this particular New World College Dictionary is that when you look in it, and we've shown it in other videos, it has the etymological brackets. In other words, it has a breakdown of what's the origin of the word and the meanings, the root, the essential etymological Meanings. Now, a lot, a lot of people don't know there's a difference between the so-called, let's look at this, the etymology, right? Right, there's a difference between the etymology and the connotation. All right, we have one and two, the etymology and the connotation. The etym means true, and logos means word or logic, the true word or the true logic. Then you have connotation. The connotation is the way that the word has been used, even falsely. In fact, let us do this right here. Let's look up connotation just so that we'll be on point with these terminologies and what we're saying right here fully. Fully on point, connotation, 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 right, connotatio, it says the act of connoting, so let's look up connote, connotare, from the Latin come together notare, a come together, together mark, a mark or a note, so I want you to pay attention, this is a mark. Now, when you don't know the roots of words, you're under the connotation, how the word has been popular, the coming together or the marking of this word by the populace or by the, its usage or misusage now. It says to suggest or convey associations overtone, or overtones in addition to the explicit or denoted meaning. The word mother means female parent. But it generally connotates love, care, tenderness, etc. Secondly, to imply or involve as a result an accompaniment, 
accompaniments, like in music, there's certain, there's certain accompaniment. It's not a part of the original score, but it's something else that has been added on. Now, there can be a good positive reason for that so-called connotation, but that means the implied meaning is not the true meaning. And if you're under the connote, the connote, the together mark, because what's a together mark? The together mark is the mark of the beast because it's more connotation of words and ideas. And remember what the Bible says in John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word. You understand? And the word was with God and the word was God. In other words, approaching words from the etymological base or the true semantic or semantic base, at least with the knowledge of it, and then to see how it's connotated. This is the knowledge, you understand, that makes free. This is the knowledge that empowers you, you understand, and restores one to that image and that likeness of God. Actually, it's what restores your divinity in the mind. You understand, in other words, you're, you're, you're being created in and after, in the image and after the likeness of God, the restored divinity to humanity, what Christ was speaking of when he said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So when you look at a word and you look at both its connotation, and then you look at this, or rather, it's etymology. But, but most don't know the etymology of the word. It's like when we touch on the word nice. The word nice tends to be connotatively a so-called good word. You understand? Yet, when you get to the etymology of the word nice, it means foolish. It means ignorant. It means not knowing. And there are plenty of other words that are used commonly ignorant, not knowingly. You understand? Know not knowingly and in ignorance. You understand? Know and now ignorance leads to error. Ignorance leads to sin. Ignorance leads to death. Ignorance leads to hell. Ignorance leads. People say ignorance is bliss. But e bliss is the Arabic way of saying Lucifer, the devil. So ignorance is, in that sense, e bliss. It's the devil. Just by another name in another language, it's still ignorance. Now, Getting that out of the way, right, um, the word connotation to basically see the differences, you understand, between the root, you understand, and the bad fruit. Now, the bad fruit is the connotations. Many of the connotations are the bad fruit. And as an example, we'll just submit the word nice. Look up the word nice. Look up in etymological brackets, for example, the word myth. The word myth, after about 1730, 1750, or 60, after about like the 1800s, the word myth meant something fictitious, like a fable, a story, something made up, imaginary. This is after 1800s. But now if you look at the etymology of the word myth, before the 1800s, the thing that you recognize, it has a whole different meaning. Before the 1800s, a myth was a story that told a, a moral, was like a parable. The best way of describing a myth, a myth was like a parable, a parabolic logic, um, a simile, uh, a symbolic, you understand, expression of a greater truth that perhaps in certain, into certain pieces, like a picture tells a thousand words. Pictures of something is like a myth, you understand, but it's painting and it's seeking because it's a picture is worth a thousand words. So within this symbolic way, one is able to communicate to those who are initiated, you understand, or who are, or who are learned or have been familiarized, you understand, with the etymology to really discover all of its possible connotations and usages, but to anchor themselves in the etymology or the etymos logos, the true word. What people don't understand today is the word. You understand? And, and it's words and misunderstandings. I say this word, somebody else thinks that means that because in their experience or past, and they were never educated on it, causes wars. It causes arguments. It causes communication breakdowns. And one of the worst things is a communication breakdown in any family, in any business, in any relationship. If one is not able, it's, it's, it's actually, and let's put this up here. It's actually what is known as Babel, and from that we have Babylon, and the meaning of that is 
Howell's chaos or confusion. Now, fusion is unity, right? Fusion is unity. Fusion, to fuse something. If you confuse against fusing something, then by virtue, you, or by, by lack thereof, you create a lack of fusion, disorder, or chaos. You understand? And we know that the New World Order, they have this expression, um, um, abort chaos or something like, or, or, or order out of confusion. You understand? So we have Babel, Babel, which means both the gate of God, you understand? And, and it can also depend, see, it's Babel, Babel, actually where some people confuse it because they don't understand the Hebrew or the Ethiopic, that Babel, Babel actually means confusion, Babel. But when you say Bob Ale, Bob Ale, but Bob L now contracted can sound to uh, unlearned, uh, illiterate one who does not know how to read. If you hear me say Bob Al, and you hear it a different way, and you know L as God, you will hear it as Bob L. Or if I say Bob L, and you are illiterate, you will hear it as Bob Al. Bob Al. You will associate with Bob Al, which is confusion. Now, Babel has two meanings. It means gate of God, and it also means confusion, and we know it in its later sense as Babylon. Now, this all grows out of the connotation, and it was at the Tower of Babel, too, that the languages, the logos, the logic was confounded, the logic was confused at the Tower of Babel, so one could not understand one another. Now, we have the antithesis of this, is in the New Testament, in the upper room, we saw that the different um, Christians or, or Jewish and, and, and followers of the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that they were able to understand one another. You see, where they were able to communicate and to understand one another, even though they spoke different languages, even though they spoke different dialects. And that was a part of what is known to be the miracle or the coming together at Pentecoste, where there's no so-called Jew, you understand, to say black, Hebrew, and there's no Gentile, no Anglo, European, white, or other nationalities who are outside of that Ethiopian Hebrew um, stock, because there is a Zerb, there is a race, there is a seed, and that seed is the true black race or the black race who is in truth. You understand, in other words, the black race, in other words, you have to be both of the seed, you understand, and the truth to really qualify for that chosen people. It's not just the blackness. This is one thing that a lot of the Afrocentrics have um, misunderstood. But all of this is just to give you some background of why we're going into this word zeitgeist. Why do we find it important to use zeitgeist as an example? What does zeitgeist really mean? We're going to take Albert Pikey's name from off here. We're going to blot out his name in just a moment. Um, you should be cheering the fact that his name is, because he was really a, a very evil guy. You understand? A very evil Goyim, a very evil Gentile. Even though he used one race against another, you understand? He used race politics. You understand? He was a hater of humanity. You understand? So a lot of them will use those sort of schemes and so forth. Some of that hater of humanity, and you can tell because Christ even says that you judge a tree by its fruits. You understand? And we can see what the fruits of when you study Albert Pikey, what his fruits were. We just want to deal with the principles here. Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. This is another popular word that sounds just like this. Do you know which word we're talking about? Think about it. Something that sounds like zeitgeist. A word that sounds like zeitgeist. It's not the same word but it's a word that sounds like zeitgeist. We're going to look it up right here so we'll be able to break down for you the two, the two um, etymologies that are used. Okay, if you, if you haven't thought of this word that sounds like zeitgeist and actually has a lot to do with zeitgeist, we just found it right here, it's the word polter. Guys, you remember that movie Poltergeist? You remember that movie Poltergeist? Did you see that movie Poltergeist? It was a crazy movie. I mean, we've there's been a lot of other crazy movies 
um, since that time, but this poltergeist was one of the craziest, especially at its time. It was, it was an additional step in the so-called end time of the mystery, the mystery of iniquity. All this is a part of the mystery of iniquity right here. Now, zeitgeist, some people say it woke a lot of folks up. That, that, that's how most people um, refer to it. Oh, that, that video, that, that, that woke me up. Well, why didn't you stay awake? You understand? You know, it's like when you wake somebody up, and they're half asleep, half awake, you understand? But they're able to register a little bit, but they fall back to sleep. This, this is what this particular series really did because of the first part. See, the first part on religion, you understand, did not, not only did it not go deep enough, it was not intended to go deep enough. It was intended to fulfill exactly what Albert Pikey wrote about. If you read that letter and that writing from the teachings of Albert Pikey, you will see basically where he says about the third war. He's speaking about the third war is going to be against religion. You understand? Mainly um, Christianity and Judaism and Islam, those so-called Abrahamic religions. It's going to be against those so-called Abrahamic religions to cause social disturbances until people w will have nothing to do you understand, with Christianity and, 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 and Judaism and even Islam. But I really think that Pikey's intent was actually to destroy Judaism, true black African Zion Judaism, you understand, even by destroying its, its, its byproduct, European Judaism, you understand, as well as Christianity to destroy the Bible and the Torah and the knowledge and the wisdom, you understand, and not just the wisdom and knowledge, but also the protection against what Albert Pikey and his evil children of Cain kind were all about. Now, when you look at the word poltergeist, poltergeist here is from the German poltern. It means to make noise to rumble, plus it has the word geist, geist, and geist means ghost, geist means ghost, in other words, this word right here, geist, means, put a G-H-O-S-T, but now look at this word ghost, let's, let's take this down so we have a little more room to write, right, look at this word ghost carefully, you see this word ghost right here, look at this word ghost, and let me write it like this, the G host. I'm not talking about 50 cents and G unit, even though he's a byproduct of that, but we're talking about G host. And, and what's that G used for? That G is used for the so-called with their compass and square. You understand? It's used for the symbol of the secret societies. You understand? The symbol of the, of the, the compass and the square, the G host. Not the true God and Father, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, host, but the false one or the antichrist, you understand, to stop the rise of the black Messiah. That's the half of the story that many of the conspiracy theories haven't really grasped just yet. Hopefully they will before it's too late. That poltergeist means to make noise, to rumble, is a plus geist, in other words, a, a, a ghost that makes noise and rumbles. And when that zeitgeist came out, there was a lot of noise and rumbling about it. Now, now check this out. When we go to zeitgeist, because we looked up zeitgeist too, so when we go to Z and look up zeitgeist, zeitgeist, there's two meanings for the word zeitgeist. The first one is zeit. The root of it is zeit, zist, zist, zistgeist. You know, these guys or something like that. City in the central Netherlands. Never. Never. Sound like neither. Netherlands. Near um, Utrecht. Utrecht. Population 60,000. Now, below that word, it says Zeitgeist. And it says German. It says time spirit. A time spirit. In the in etymological bracket. It says ger for German and time spirit. Then they give the connotative definition, the spirit of the age. Then there's a semicolon. After that semicolon, it reads trend 
trend of thought and feeling in a period. It's the trend, and this is what the zeitgeist, the zeitgeist um, first part especially, really did. It set the tone to fulfill what Albert Pikey spoke of. It was the ideal vehicle. And beyond that, here's what's interesting, beyond that, there are a lot of these so-called New World Order folks that we know. I know Clinton is a part of it, and there's a couple of other Democrats, Republican, whatever, you understand, who are part of this, um, who are part of some, some, uh, some, I don't know what they, what, what they would call it, a think tank, perhaps some think tank or a group of people who like to hobnob and so-called network and rub shoulders and peck to peck and cheek to cheek it, you know, doing their Masonic signs or whatever. But there's a, a group of New World Order like industrialists and, 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 and chief people behind the scenes who also go to and are part of some group that's called the Zeitgeist something or another. I'm sorry I don't have the full name and the full information, but go out there and search it out, Zeitgeist and Clinton. We know Clinton's a part of it. Clinton speaks at this some kind of steering committee, you understand, that get together every year or a couple of times a year, something like the Council on Foreign Relations and the rest of them, they're part of this Zeitgeist group. So there's actually a group, a zeitgeist group, which now brings to mind, could they be behind this? Uh, duh. It's obvious seeing what the results of this are. People think it's to wake people up. But it's not really to wake people up. It's to disturb people. It's a ghost. This doesn't mean spirit of the age, as they say. It means ghost of age. You know what I'm saying? Ghost of age, and it's a ghost of time, too. It's part of what now makes a lot of folks who have seen it think like there's no time for this, there's no time for that. It's a what? Heist. Heist. Well, yeah, it's a heist. That's, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You understand? Even if you're out of the class, if you're still paying attention, you're in the class. It's still the zeitgeist. It's a heist. Look at this, too, this word right here, a heist. So we have zeitgeist or zeitheist. It's a heist. It's jacking time and make everybody running around. Like once you've seen it and then you see it, and it also helps to – and it's predictive programming. It's what they call predictive programming, where now that they put this out there, if you see anything out there in the media, you'll be like, oh, that's just like zeitgeist. But what ones don't really see – it works into the already established and, docu and documented so-called Illuminati, a Satanistic agenda. Because if they want to stop the rise of the black Messiah, and please don't tell me about Obama. I think Freeman Perspective, he has put out one of the most credible set of um, um, presentation on the fact that there's more of a connection with Obama to the late 18th dynasty pharaoh named Kuenaten, or popularly called Unkenunten, Unkenaten. If you've checked that out, please check that out. Go to Freedman Perspective, Freedman TV. It's on the YouTubes. You can see it there. We'll probably have some videos available as well. But it's out there on the Internet. Look it up. for Please check it out for yourself. The, the, Freeman has done a lot of work that has presented a lot of basic information. There's no need for us to have to regurgitate on some of it while he has gone into a lot of um, even some firsthand information that helps to give ones the background, you understand, the, the prerequisite background that they would need in order to come up to, to, to this level. When I say this level, this level is the level of that black Christ that they are seeking to seeking to stop the rise of, you see, stop the rise of. Now, Obama being black or being part black or at least black in his appearance, but of a, this is also part of this same Babel, Babylon. This is a part of the chaos and confusion because it has many people in a frozen psychological state. 
many people see something that Obama is doing that might not be right, maybe against their political um, perspective or what are the reasons why they voted for him, but they refuse. They refuse to say anything because they figure, oh, this is going to make it bad for him, and so so they are stuck. They are like stuck in the so-called matrix. You know what I'm saying? Stuck in this birth canal of this new age. It is a new age. The new age does not belong to them, but what they are seeking by the zeitgeist is a zeitheist. You understand? Know because when you compare now zeitgeist with poltergeist, it is, it is very, very interesting because we wanted to put zeitgeist out there. So let's now touch on poltergeist. The connotative um, so-called definition for poltergeist is a ghost supposed to be responsible for mysterious, noisy disturbances, just like the zeitgeist. It's a ghost that is thought to be responsible, right, for, for mysterious New World Order Illuminati disturbances. Ooh, they're out there. Oh, nothing you can do. It's happening tomorrow. It's going to happen at 12 o'clock. Look for it on this channel or that channel. You know what I mean? Get the new video on such and such, what's going to happen very soon. So put it out there. You know what I mean? That's how you can also tell some of the differences. But this was put out there, Zeitgeist was put out there, and it became an overnight hit. A lot of people think, now I know. But what it has done with its first part, the first part that was very inaccurately, not just researched, but presented. It was presented from a Luciferian um, perspective, a, a Satanistic perspective. You understand? It was represented from a perspective to turn ones off to so-called, not just religion, but to Judaism, but moreover to Christianity, to the true Christianity. Because for some of us as Afrocentric, we jumped up and we felt happy about it because we was like, now, look, they're telling you it all come out of Egypt. But some of us was like, not so fast. I mean, with all, if the person who, who did this was able to get this much information and got to this point of research, they should have been able to do a better job than they did. And it vastly, greatly misused a lot of our brother Gerald Macy's um, the English uh, poet um, and self-taught Egyptologist, his work was re re very much distorted. It did not even emphasize the, the racial aspects that the New World Order has actually sought to invert. Yeah, you have to see how the New World Order has really inverted. It, it uses black. It uses the black people because the black people are part of that. The black people is like the battery. It's like the Duracell. If you get a nigga onto this New World Order stuff and, and, and he doesn't have no conscience or can lose their conscience about it, they will bring many others into it. And we've kind of been seeing this in the hip-hop. We've been seeing this in the so-called soul music among black folks or the politicians and the rest of them. And this is why they, they are allowed in that sense. Obama, I would say they allowed it because they, they, they had their finger on the trigger. But they felt that Obama could give them what they needed because so many people were getting turned off, you understand, to the system of things that if it continued in that way, there would be really a physical exodus that people were already leaving, you understand, but there would be a physical exodus if it continued in that way. So they had to kind of now bring things back into more manageability. And this is where... Obama would be like this interim, in a sense, manager. Because after Obama, they can always say, we already gave you a black president. I mean, now sit back and enjoy the ride. You understand? You got your black president, you know? And, and so it also destroys civil rights at the same time. Not just for black people, but for other people, too. That the only rights people will get is if you are part of this Luciferian and Satanistic cult or if you have been sufficiently programmed, you know what I'm saying, in the spirit of your mind to be in conformity to the world, to be in world, world conformity. This is why it says, love not the world or the things that are in them. It's not talking about don't love nature, what God created, the heaven, the earth, the sea, or the creatures, God's created creatures, but not to love the world because the world is 
a system of things. Even in that day and time, it was a Greco-Romantic system or Greco-Roman system of things. And even today, go to D.C., you can see Egypt there as a basic building base, as a Masonic base. Then you also find you also find Greco influences, democracy. You understand? You find Roman influences, American Express. I mean, the, the highest card is the black card. Isn't this interesting? But some still don't get it. But what is the solution? We think that the video we've seen from Freeman perspective and um, his associates and others um, wash your mind. You understand? The wash your mind video is a is a must see we think that we encourage at least our subscribers on this check out this video and tell i and i you know tell us what you think about it it's a good step but wash your brain, wash your brain. actually see there, there it goes it should have said wash your actually should have said wash your wash your mind because the mind needs to be washed now this leads us to a point that we touched on a couple of um, months maybe a year or so ago and, in fact, we are happy that we listened to the, 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 the good influences of the Holy Spirit and did put this out because we thought, there was a thought in our head that, oh, well, you know, ones may not be ready for this right now, you know, on baptism. You see, because the principles of baptism, when they are properly understood, because you remember, the, the Bible is not to be understood, as they say, just literally. There is a literal level. You understand? But it's, it's proven in the Bible, by the Bible, that it's not to be understood literally, you understand, but metaphysically. So the physical is there as a base, but the conclusion of the matter is not a five-cycle conclusion. It's a metaphysical or a spiritual conclusion. So there is the water baptism the physical water baptism, and then there's a spiritual baptism. And it's very important for us to understand the, the role of that being washed by the word. But the word word is actually the logos. So if we would look at the word word, we would see that the word word is the word logos. And logos don't just mean the word like words that I'm speaking, but it's the logic. It's the logic and the reasoning. This is what they call logos, or logic is reasoning. The reasoning that now brings all of the words together to bring out a word, a thought, an idea. Now, when we look at Zeitgeist, because we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't prepare, you know, this particular, this is an inspiration right here to touch on it, something that's been on our heart and mind. Then when we look at the word Zeitgeist right here, it says the trend of thought and feeling in a period. Would you say that the documentary Zeitgeist has really um, changed or increased a certain um, trend in, in thought and trend of thought and feeling? A certain thought and feeling has been increased, you understand, and even focus. But at the same time, those who are not spiritually grounded, it can cause a frozen psychological state. A frozen psychological state is like where, out of fear, you're, it's, like, it's like you've seen a ghost. It's just like you've seen a ghost. Every time you see something from the video, if you are not grounded, it's like you've seen a ghost. And after a while, you may not recognize or notice even the programming. There's program, and it's all because of that first part. See, the first part, the second and third part of the Zeitgeist video was fairly accurate and, and on point. But when you now compare it with the first part, you would wonder, is it the same people who even did this? Now, some would say, well, yes, they had to deal with it like that because, you know, topics of religion and so forth and so on are sensitive issues, so this is why they just dealt with it lighter than that. No, they dealt with it because they didn't want to face the black truth. You know what I'm saying? They didn't want to face the black sun. We're not talking about the black sun, S-U-N, of the Nazis, in their interpretation or misinterpretation, but the true black son. And that black son is our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, because that is the crux. That's the cross. That's the crux of the matter. They said, COINTELPRO, they sought to stop the rise of a black Messiah. 
So that means we are still in a white supremacist vein. So all those conspiracy theorists really have to confront the white supremacist element and, and get off of this frozen psychological state that it does not matter what race Jesus Christ was. Because race means seed, biblically speaking. So if you're a Christian and you want to ignore the seed of Christ, you want to ignore God's chosen seed. That means that even if you are against the so-called New World Order, Satanist, Illuminati, and what you see going on and the signs of the times and everything like that, you are not fully empowered because you are half-stepping, especially if you've been informed. And this is why we're putting this forward to be a, an information. One needs to be informed. The half of the story that even many of the other teachers and lecturers and, reason, and, and, and ones presenting their researchers, researchers out there, are well-meaning. Many of them are well-meaning, but very few of them have had, can we say, the spiritual balls bearing, you understand, to really confront the white supremacist, the white supremacist element you see, because as long as you think, you understand, as long as you think that um, the white Jesus is even fairly accurate, a portrayal, then what you're not recognizing is this is the mark. This is the mark of the beast. And those white people, such as Macy, Gerald Macy, and many others who have been able to recognize that element have become even more effective, you understand, in their life calling and in their mission. So this is like a loving kind of wake-up call to a lot of the ones out there that try to avoid, like we, we, we touched on, what's his name, Alex Jones early, and we said we wasn't going to go into him right now, but at, at then, but at least now we can because Alex Jones is another prime, prime example. You know, whenever anybody talk about, like, the black Hebrews or Israel or even Rastafari, he always acts like he's a know-it-all. You know, he like, yeah, I know it all, but I'm not, I want to deal with that because I deal with religion. I want to just deal with this politics, political stuff. And that's where a lot of, um, a lot of the Anglo and Europeans, that's where they kind of stick themselves, a lot of them, because they don't want to confront truth across the board because they don't want to confront truth on the issue of what race was Jesus Christ and the claims of we as Ethiopian Hebrews. You understand? Know but that is the antithesis you understand know that is the antithesis to to the to the lie is the truth. The truth is the opposite of the lie. You understand? Know and what can be more opposite than our Black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to Caesar's Christ, Cesare Borgia? You understand? Know Both in the fruit, he says, judge a tree by its fruit. You understand? Know and just in the the, the overall, the obvious, what is, what is painfully obvious, even on the surface. Now, because we're saying our black Lord and Savior and the black Christ or the black Messiah, as COINTELPRO even stated their aims and objective, to stop the rise of the black Messiah, what can be more Luciferian and antichrist than that? Not just for black people, because it goes beyond just for black people, but for all of humanity. And folks and folks haven't put the two and two together. Now they're using the black face, the face of black people, to promote their Satanistic New World Order and Luciferian agendas. Folks can point that out, you know, saying for all these hip hop, rap, and other politicians, social people who are known, um, the boule, people can point that out. Even even white folks link that along with the rest of their New World Order, anti-Freemasonic, so forth and so on, um, conspiracy stuff. But they don't want to go the way, the spiritual way of truth, and acknowledging the half of the story concerning our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That means that they're not able to operate, you understand, in the fullness you understand, of the Spirit of God in Christ. And that means they're not going to fully, you will send overcome. They're not going to fully be able to achieve their objective, even though we think that a lot of these um, individuals out there are not just well-meaning, but are very accurate about what they are willing to address. But whenever we touch on the race, I think even Jordan Maxwell got to the point where even he went to Egypt, and um, he even more started to recognize um, that, you know, the, the role of black people, 
you know, in this equation and with the suppression of the true lost sheep of the house of Israel is the rise of the Antichrist, whether it's in blackface or whether it's in white face, but with the suppression of the of the black Messiah, there's not going to be an immediate rise of even the black Antichrist. There's going to be, of course, the, the white Antichrist or that image of Cesare Borgia, you understand, as well as the false the false um, mother, maternal image. Because you, you have to recall that in the early days of so-called Christianity, before it got um, institutionalized and thereby uh, uh, corrupted in its Romanist and mystery Babylon form, it was that image of the black Madonna that even exalted and inspired women as far as Europe, even white women in Europe, and even women as far as in Asia, you understand, to really regard that whole role of mother, sister, daughter, and wife. The same thing with the image of our black Lord and Savior. So image is very, very important. And unless ones can recognize what's really behind this zeitgeist, beginning off with the etymology, is the key thing. You know, and this, we're going to meditate this some more because some elements came out in this presentation that we, we didn't see previous to this recording. So we're learning some things here as we are presenting it because in the presentation, spiritually speaking, we're inspired with more. So sometimes we're speaking and things will, 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 will come forward that even while we're speaking and we say, wow, that's a new one. We didn't notice that previously. And then we'll go do more research and that'll lead us into another level of understanding and awareness. So the zeitgeist, as with anything else, you have to know what, what's in a name. What's in a name is very, very important. This is why we highly recommend, especially for the, the, the newcomers, to get a good dictionary and we suggest the Webster's New World College Dictionary mainly because of its etymological brackets and the etymological focus that it has on the majority of words. And then you can see, well, here's what the word really means. And we use the word nice as, as, as one example. But there are, there are hundreds, actually, if not thousands of other words that we take to mean one thing. But really, in truth, it has a whole other meaning. And if the Bible is true and we bear witness in our own experience that it is true and rightly understood, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So there's much more to come. Stay tuned. I am Wendem Yadin reporting for the LOJ Society of His Imperial Majesty. Shalom, Rastafari.